Dr. Shravan Dasaju, is a political activist, corporate home show, teacher, HR trainer, thinker, researcher, popular political analyst, and chief official spokesperson of Telangana State Congress Committee, all rolled into one. Combining the scholarship of a deep thinker with the skills of an actual political activist, he has emerged as one of the visible faces of Telangana movement and politics in general. He is known for his unrelenting fight for social justice. Dr. Good morning, uh, ladies and gentlemen. At the outset, distinguished Professor G. B. Rigby, President of this meeting, and uh, the most accomplished leader of this region, Mr. Mari Shishida Reddy, my good old friend Balasubramanian, and very inspiring speaker Sunil, I heard very interesting speech from him. And uh, my teacher, Professor Pushwatam Reddy and Mr. Ramaya, and all the distinguished uh, people from different uh, walks of life and members of media. I first of all would like to congratulate Social Cause, uh, the organization, for taking up such a vital subject, which is actually burning across the country. And uh, at a time when the farmers and the poor are really suffering in the country, this topic probably, the discussion on this topic probably is very vital. I had an experience of uh, working with uh, a project called Tehri uh, Hydro Development Corporation's project, uh, Resettlement and Rehabilitation Study I've done. That's way back in 1990. Uh, I just gra I was graduated at that point of time from Usman University and joined Administrative Staff College of India. THDC, Tehri Development Corporation, that's where uh, uh, the, in a place called Tehri, the up Himalayas in Uttarakhand, the project was constructed, Tehri Dam. And there are a lot of issues, Sundarlal Bhavuna and all the people who are making a lot of ruckus about it that the rehabilitation and resettlement is not done. So then, he then Prime Minister P.V. Natsimarao has uh, commissioned a project to the title of the project was Socio-Economic Study of the Project Affected Population. Almost 125 villages were uh, submerged, both fully and partially. And Staff College was uh, commissioned and I happened to be um, uh, one of the very important persons in that project. Dr. K. S. Ramesh was the project director and I was the project type uh, coordinator. And I happened to lived there in those uh, project affected villages for almost six months uh, between 90 and 91 and uh, made a very thorough analysis of what the issues and concerns and stuff like that. So my association with the, uh, the resettlement and rehabilitation starts from there. One of the, uh, we, we, we tried to compare the, the, the rehabilitation policies of Narmada Sarovar project and as well as uh, the Tehri Harvard Corporation, we made certain policy positions. One thing that I have very uh, uh, pointedly observed was, there was a very mechanical approach of the government and the officers there when they were trying to identify the, or when they were trying to deal with the, uh, the project affected population. Humko ye kaam diya gaya hai, 125 villages notify diya hai, waan pe kuch hazaar loog jite hai, उन लोगों को आईडेंटिफाई करो, पिकअप करो, उठा के कहीं रिहाबिलिटेशन साइट पे फेंको। A very inhuman attitude was being demonstrated at that point of time. Now, unlike the the people living on the plain lands, there is a different kind of an emotional attached to the land and social and psychological climate was very different in the hills. Their agriculture pattern was different. Their livelihood pattern was different. Their lifestyle was different. 
जहाँ तक कि वो लोग गंगा से इतना इमोशनल रिलेशन लगते हैं कि दे से दैट यू नो वी आर बोर्न इन गैंगस एंड देन डाई इन गैंगस एंड देन डाई यू नो द डेड बॉडीज इन दोस हिलॉक्स दे जस्ट पुट टू थ्री द रॉक्स द बैंक्स ऑफ द रिवर एंड देन पुट द डेड बॉडी एंड देन टू थ्री वुड विल लॉक्स एंड देन बर्न इट सो एज द बॉडी बर्न्स एंड देन बिकम्स एशेस दैट मेल्ट्स इनटू द मेल्ट्स इनटू द यू नो गैंगस सो दैट्स द काइंड ऑफ इमोशनल अटैचमेंट दे हैड एंड ऑल ऑफ देम वर डंप्ड डाउन इन समवेयर नियर डेहराडून बनियावाला and they identified few acres of land and then uh, they are given the rehabilitation sites major problem they faced was that uh, having coming from the hillocks to the uh, the plain lands they didn't know the method of and the pattern of agriculture in the plain land and they were literally clueless you know how to go about doing the cultivation because there is a different kind of a climate and different kind of a cultivation pattern so the life styles were very different and they were not able to adjust प्लेन में थोड़ा होशियारी लोग रहते हैं वहां पे तो थोड़ा इनोसेंट लोग ज्यादा रहते थे सो दे वर नॉट इवन कॉन्शियस द द लाइफ स्टाइल ऑफ द लोक द प्लेन लाइफ थ्री वाज इवन एम्प्लॉयमेंट द काइंड ऑफ एम्प्लॉयमेंट अपॉर्चुनिटीज दैट आर अवेलेबल दे आर नॉट ट्रेन सो एट दैट ऑफ दैट एट दैट पॉइंट ऑफ टाइम व्हाट वी फाउंड वाज द गवर्नमेंट वाज इनह्यूमन एंड इनसेन एंड देन दे जस्ट डिड अ मैकेनिकल अप्रोच ऑफ डंपिंग द पीपल फ्रॉम द हिल्स टू द डाउन and this is what happened not only in dhcc across the country wherever there was a development project con con you know constructed in the name of development we have destroyed the poor people that can be uh, uh, the dhcc project or that can be singur project that can be shriram sagar project that can be ntpc project all the places most often it is the government which behaved very insane and inhuman and that is when i think this discussion is very pertinent now sunil has raised a very interesting question uh, why is this uh, um, uh, the ordinance has been brought in has this been tested the 2013 act has come out not just out of one month or two months effort but about three years of very consistent efforts of the upa uh, you know the government both rahul jairam and kukula raju who has been in this state was responsible for a lot of development projects all of them put together sat together and then came out with that uh, uh, you know uh, uh, the, uh, the entire uh, act now overnight through a back door an ordinance has been brought i think sunil raised a question but there was also an answer in sunil's question what was the necessity that necessity i'm sure all of us would understand what was the necessity we think mr modi ji in his hurry to convert the country into a make in india model and in a hurry to get in lot of foreign investors he wanted the land so therefore you know somewhere along you know we have to bypass whatever the you know the the hurdles perceived hurdles i would call perceived hurdles and then he brought in this ordinance and result of that is today poor is again become very vulnerable the poor farmer is again become very vulnerable is what i would like to um uh, uh, bring to your kind notice if i would look at the issues of concern issues of uh, social impact assessment if you really go a little deeper into that at a very eternal level at a philosophical level, if you look at it 2013 act is an extension of democracy a reinforcement of democracy there are two things that i would say if you are seeking consent from a poor farmer you are reinforcing democracy you are strengthening democracy if you are asking for a social impact assessment i think that act is really asking you to be humane i think they are fundamentally uh, trying to reinforce the need for you know humanity so both democracy and humanity both are being scuttled in the in the form of the ordinance or in the form of the new act that is being brought in by the nda government and that is something that we have to send a strong message to the government of india that they have to really look at uh, you know and alter whatever the um, uh, you know things that they have made in the new act so we raise another point that he talked about a three sons theory and i think peda vaadu eppudu kuda gontu ledu petta vaadu gontu inantu dabbunna vaadu gontu corporate la gontu inantha balanga ee samajamu peda vaadu gontu peda vaadu ante vaadu gatti kulla eega doma vaadu maata ke maatram kuda vilu unnattu ga idu kada the ordinance probably is immune to or uh, you know unwilling to listen to the poor farmers is what um, I feel. Second thing, I think uh, Professor uh, Mr. Ramaya talked about uh, the acts impracticable. Maybe it's impractical because it's your experience. But I also have seen Sri City. Have you all heard? Sri City, Sri Sri Niraju. Ten thousand acres that man has acquired. No difficulty. 
for a government machinery to acquire uh, 300 acres or 400 acres, 500 acres, is that a real difficulty? Where there is a will, there is a way. If Ramoji fill in city of about 3 to 4 thousand acres, one man called Ramoji Rao could acquire, that has been legitimized by our chief minister that he has, I, I mean, that I am not getting into the sanctity of this certification. But he has certified, our chief minister has certified that there is no Arab um, uh, in that entire land acquisition process. Yeah? No, no inch of land was acquired, land was acquired illegally, what the certificate of the current chief minister. Which means, if one Ramoji Rao was an individual entity, he could acquire 3 acres, 3,000 acres of land and build such a beautiful project. Can Mr. Ramaya or can uh, Mr. Rajgopal or some XYZ IAS officers put together and cannot be acquired the land? They can. It is just that now the government is wanting to protect the interests of the capitalists, not the protect the interests of the poor. That is where they were coming up with the, these excuses. I wanted to give you Fab City, for example. What happens? You have acquired about 800 acres of land. One inch of land is not being put to use and government is not willing to resume back. And the NDA government was so wise enough to have brought in a clause called within five years if the project is not in operation, we will, you know, resume the land and then give away the land back to the government or to the poor. Isn't it humanity? Isn't it a very fundamental thing? There are so many SEZs we have granted in this country. How many SEZs are really functional? Why is that the clause of five years has been totally diluted in this act? That means you wanted to bear the intended or unintended or deliberate delays of these capitalists. Most often I feel there's a big tactic in this. They take the land, the value of the entire commissioned project may be about 1000 crores and the value of the land may be about 5000 crores. Put together 6000 crores is my value, they go to the stocks and then lose the people. This is what is happening in most of the places. And government, if in case they don't, impose such kind of a, you know, the tenure clause uh, in a serious way, dilute that clause, then I think uh, we are really entering into a very uh, uh, serious problem. I will tell you another small example of how callous the government would be. When the ring road was being constructed, the ring road was given to a particular contractor. And that contractor uh, wanted uh, Kankar and Tanjadman, small small stones, metal. So he wanted that, uh, uh, you know, small crusher to be uh, planted somewhere. And he went and approached, you gave me the project, but we don't, I don't have a land nearby, you give me a land also to set up the crushers. So, Raj Gopal, if I can take the name, the IAS officer, he then uh, uh, APIC director also. He did the little bit of exercise and then gave about 10-20 uh, acres of land, uh, which is nearby Ibrahim Patnam at Yachar Mandal. You know what? That's a cultivable land. Just that there was a dispute and for the last five years they have not, uh, four, for three, four years they have not, uh, in the, you know, involved in the cultivation. They came up with a pretext that last five years this land is not cultivable, so therefore we are giving it off to them. So that kind of a uh, unilateral decision government has taken without uh, giving any kind of a respect uh, to, uh, to the landowner. Whom you are going to the Eagle of India, Pakistan, the Liberal Party, 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 what he wanted to live you to live you to the one at the world. Who may not be our own individual or smart and who will not enter for the Gauru? Who will be near the way one with you? Who will be near the way one with you? Who will be near the way one with you? Who will be near the way one with you? Who will be near the way one with you? Who will be near the way one with you? Who will be near the way one with you? Who will be near the way one with you? Who will be near the way one with you? Who will be near the way one with you? Who will be near the way one with you? Who will be near the way one with you? Malla, I think you can act like such a child and Japan, you are an organized swara or come into India and three years ago. In book, important part. If I am not part of a decision making process, I don't own that decision. It's a very, that is after this book. What are you doing? Without my consent, you want to take away my land. Do you think I own that development? That means you are disintegrating me with the so called development process of the country. You integrate me, that means you seek my consent for the land. So, here I can go to the impact assessment of the information one of the very fundamental things. It's not only the landlord, owner, but also the dependent artisan. Palle, in particular, the Telangana level of the Jewish country, the Palle law, one day, Kerala, Rendon, the Kerala, who will own the owners under two hundred and two. There's a yes, no one under two. Tanya, one day, Kerala, Pantavanetam, Valla, Bakhtam, economy of that village is dependent on them. 
ఒక సాల ఆయనకు ఒక మంగళ ఆయనకు ఒక కుమ్మర ఆయనకు ఒక రుజుల ఆయనకు ఒక వడ్ల ఆయనకు అన్ని వ్యవస్థలన్నీ కూడా దాన్ని బతుకుతాయి ఇవాళ మీరు భూములు ఉండిపోవడంతో కేవలం ఆ భూమి వంద ఎకరాలు ఉన్నటువంటి వాళ్ళు యాభై మంది అరవై మంది ఉంటారు వాళ్ళే కాదు కదా చుట్టూ ఉన్నటువంటి ఒక సమాజం అంతా కూడా విచ్ఛిన్నమైన పరిస్థితి ఏర్పడుతుంది వాళ్ళ యొక్క స్థితిగతులను బాగు చేయడం కోసం అని చెప్పని సోషల్ ఇంపాక్ట్ అసెస్మెంట్ ఒక క్లాస్ ఒక డెమోక్రాటిక్ వేలో దీంట్లో ఇన్సర్ట్ చేసింది దాన్ని కూడా ఈరోజు పక్కకు పెట్టిన ఒక పరిస్థితి చూస్తూ ఉన్నాం రెండవది మూడో అంశం ఏంటంటే ఈ ఐదు సెక్టర్లు ఏదైతే ఎగ్జామ్ చేశారో దాంట్లో మీరు ఇంకా మొత్తం అంతా చూసినట్టయితే సో ఫార్ ద డెవలప్మెంట్ ప్రా ఇప్పుడు ఉన్నటువంటి ఒక మోడల్ ఎకానమీలో వీ టాకింగ్ ఆఫ్ పీపీపి మోడల్ ది కంట్రీ హ్యాస్ టు గ్రో ఓన్లీ త్రూ పీపీపి మోడల్ అని చెప్పి ఒక బజ్ వర్డ్ నడుస్తున్న నేపథ్యంలో రేపు మేక్ ఇన్ ఇండియా అనేటువంటి ఒక కాన్సెప్ట్ నిజంగా సక్సెస్ కావాలంటే ఫారిన్ కంపెనీస్ పెట్టాలంటే అన్ని కూడా ఈ పీపీపి మోడల్ లోనే ఉంటాయి కాబట్టి పెద్ద ఎత్తున భూమి అనేటువంటిది ఆ పీపీపి మోడల్ చేతిలో చెప్తుంది ఆ మోడల్ లో ఉంటుంది ఆ మోడల్ అంటే పెట్టుబడిదారు చేతుల్లో క్యాపిటలిస్ట్ చేతుల్లో భూములు పోయేటువంటి ఒక పరిస్థితి ఏర్పడుతుంది కాబట్టి తప్పనిసరిగా పేదవాడి భూమిని పెట్టుబడిదారి అందజేసేటువంటి ఒక పద్ధతి ఈ యొక్క చట్టం ఉందని చెప్పని మేము భావిస్తా ఉన్నాం చివరిగా ఒక అంశాన్ని నేను మీకు తప్పు చేసిన వదిలిపెట్టాను నిన్న జరిగిన రేవంత్ రెడ్డి అంశం కానీ లేకపోతే దేశంలో ఇవాళ జరుగుతున్నటువంటి రాజకీయ వ్యాపారం ఏదైతే జరుగుతా ఉందో దీనికి కారణం ఒకటే ఒకటి కనెక్షన్స్ బిట్వీన్ ది కార్పొరేట్స్ అండ్ ది క్యాపిటలిస్ట్ అండ్ ది సో కాల్ పొలిటీషియన్ పార్లమెంట్కి వెళ్ళండి ఒకసారి మీరు పైకి వెళ్ళి ఇక్కడ కిందికి వెళ్ళి చూడండి కెన్ ఐ ఫైండ్ వన్ ఫెలో హూస్ నాట్ కరప్ట్ అని ఒక ప్రశ్న అడగండి అంటే మీరు మీ డిఫరెంట్ డిఫరెన్షియల్స్ ఉంటుండ నా దృష్టిలో ఎవ్రీబడి ఇస్తారు ఎందుకు అంటున్నా అంటే నలభై లక్షల రూపాయల కంటే ఎక్కువ ఎవరు ఖర్చు పెట్టకూడదు వారు డెబ్బై ఐదు లక్షల కంటే ఎక్కువ ఎవరు ఖర్చు పెట్టకూడదు యాభై కోటి అంటే ఖర్చు పెట్టినాడు ఒక ఎంపీకి ఎక్కడి నుంచి వస్తుంది డబ్బు అంతా ఎవరి డబ్బు ఇదంతా పీపీపీ మోడల్లో మనము ఆ రాజకీయ నాయకులకు మనం ఫెసిలిటేట్ చేయాలన్నా కూడా రేవంత్ రెడ్డి డబ్బు ఎక్కడి నుంచి వచ్చింది అని అంటే వాడు చెప్తాడు పేపర్లు ఎవరు రాసినాడు ఎవడో ఒక పెట్టుబడిదారంటే క్యాపిటలిస్ట్ ఇచ్చిందో అని సో దిస్ నెక్సెస్ ఇస్ అన్ఫార్చునేట్లీ కాజింగ్ సో మచ్ ప్రాబ్లమ్ Today, we are seeing a very contaminated, commercialized politics and the poor man's voice is not heard is because of the nexus between the capitalist and the politicians. And this act, this ordinance, what has been brought in, is essentially trying to promote the so-called nexus between the corporates and the politicians, which is detrimental to the poor people, which is detrimental to the interests of the democracy and the humanity. So therefore, my appeal to the government of India through you is to have, in fact, I, I'll tell you why Uh, you know, I don't know, I have the paper there. While this consultation process is on, there can be a greedy politician and a greedy capitalist. Here is one geo, I'll tell you. The government of Telangana has not adopted a geo called 421. 421 essentially talks about compensating the farmers. Farmers who commit suicide should be given one and a half lakh rupees. They, after one year of its tenure, its existence, government of Telangana has not adopted that particular uh, geo. But these people have audacity, urgency to go ahead and adopt this GO and um, uh, come up with a GO accepting the ordinance. While you are consulting here, the civil society is consulting, there is a parliamentary committee, uh, consultations are going on till July, June 8th, this process is on. And here is one government which is so hurried enough to come forward with a GO that yes, we are accepting this land because it's convenient for them to accept between corporates and the politicians. They can also grant projects to the right center, take away lands. So this kind of a unholy uh, practices might happen. So therefore it's important that we really call ourselves as a democracy. We need to give watch to the poor. If we really call ourselves as human beings, then I think we should hear the poor people. I'm not saying that development should not happen, but development should not be at the cause of destroying the poor, innocent and common man. Thank you so much.